Option one, the bond energy of carbon carbon bond in graphite is greater than that in diamond. So how do I show uh, this is true? Since graphite to diamond, it is endothermic. In terms of the enthalpy level, you wouldn't expect graphite to have a lower enthalpy and therefore it is more stable. So if it is more stable, it means that whatever bonds that we have in graphite has to be more stable than whatever bonds that we have in diamond, which is interesting huh? because in graphite, I have my carbon-carbon single bond. Diamond, I also have carbon-carbon single bond. So somehow the carbon-carbon single bond in graphite is more stable than the carbon-carbon bond in diamond. Uh, we don't really need all this detail to determine option one to be true, but I think it is interesting to talk about. Uh, we can try to explain. How come uh, uh, if I have uh, graphite has carbon-carbon single bond, diamond also have carbon-carbon single bond. So why is there a difference in the bond energy if it is just carbon-carbon single bond? Uh, because if I consider carbon-carbon single bond in the data booklet, uh, there's only one value. So we are not able to try to differentiate between my carbon-carbon single bond. If I'm only using concepts in energetics, we're not able to differentiate them. So we will have to bring in hybridization and this idea called the percentage S character. So let us establish first uh, for my graphite, what is the state of hybridization for my carbon? It is sp2 hybridized because my carbon is attached to three other carbon involving sigma bond. Then there's one bond which is involved in the delocalization, right? Uh, Van der Waals attraction between one graphite layer and another graphite layer. So involving the hybridization for my graphite carbon, this guy is sp2 hybridized. I mix S orbital and 2P orbital, I'll get three hybridized, uh, sp2 hybridized orbital. This will be used in sigma bond formation with the other carbon. As mentioned, this unhybridized uh, electron in my 2PZ orbital will be involved in the delocalization between one uh, graphite layer and another graphite layer, my Van der Waals attraction. Then involving diamond, each carbon is attached to four other carbon. Hybridization for my carbon is sp3 because you will need to mix four orbitals to get four hybridized orbital to form four sigma bond, sp3 hybridized in diamond. Now the next thing is my percentage S character. Percentage S character, uh, the idea is if I consider hybridization, it is a process of mixing. So my hybridized orbital will have properties of both my S orbital as well as the P orbital. And the percentage S character is how much of it resemble my S orbital, which is very easy. If I consider sp2 hybridized orbital, out of the three orbitals that we're mixing, one is S orbital, the other two is P orbital. So therefore, percentage S character, or how much of it will resemble the property of S orbital, will be one third or 33%. Because out of three orbitals, I mix one of it is S, correct? One third S character. SP3 hybridized orbital, will be one quarter S character. Because in total out of four orbitals, one of it is S orbital, the remaining three is P orbital, one quarter S character for SP3 hybridized orbital. So if I consider SP hybridized orbital, it will be 50% S character. Because out of two orbitals, one is S, one is P. SP is 50% S character. The S character is even larger. So what's the big deal about S character. So what if you have a bigger percentage S character? If I compare 2S subshell versus 2P subshell, which one is more stable? 2S subshell is more stable. We learned this under atomic structure, right? In the same principal quantum shell, S is more stable than P, than D, and so on. So 2S is more stable than 2P, 3S more stable than 3P, than 3D. So if I have a more S character, greater percentage S character, then my property will be closer to that of my S orbital, which means that it will be more stable. But usually I like to link this to distance from the nucleus because it is easier for us to visualize. So if I have more S character, then my hybridized orbital, SP2 hybridized orbital, will be shorter and closer to the nucleus because it will resemble more like a S orbital. If I have less percentage S character, then my sp3 hybridized orbital will be longer and further away from the nucleus because it will resemble less like that of an s orbital, more like a p orbital. Okay? And the consequence of this uh, is if my sp2 orbital it is shorter and if I use it to form a bond, then the corresponding bond that I'm forming 
we also tend to be shorter and therefore we'll be stronger. Uh, uh, two shorter sp2 hybridized orbital overlap to form a carbon-carbon bond. The bond naturally will be shorter and therefore will be stronger. If I'm using sp3 hybridized orbital, which is longer, and if I use it for orbital overlap, the corresponding bond that I'm forming will be longer and weaker. Two longer sp3 hybridized orbital, the bond that you form will be longer and weaker, which means that the bond energy for my carbon-carbon bond in my uh, diamond will be weaker. Okay? So that is the uh, comparison between these two, which actually is not very difficult. We just need to keep in mind uh, in questions where they ask us to compare uh, two types of the same bond, carbon-carbon bond versus carbon-carbon single bond versus carbon-carbon single bond. Sometimes they ask me to compare carbon-carbon double bond versus carbon-carbon double bond, or maybe CH bond versus CH bond. The comparison involving two of the exact same type of bond, then they ask me to comment on the difference in the bond energy, or the bond length. Sometimes MCQ question will ask me, well, oh, this carbon-carbon bond is how many nanometer? The carbon-carbon bond is how many nanometer? So why is there a difference in the bond length? So the concept that we will use is, we will talk about the state of hybridization, percentage S character. Remember, involving uh, SP hybridized orbital, that is the shortest, followed by SP2, followed by SP3. SP3 hybridized orbital, the percentage S character, it is the lowest. So the bond it is longer, or the orbital is longer. So the corresponding bond that you will form will be longer and weaker. Okay, so a good discussion, uh, even though not really necessary uh, for this exercise.